Good afternoon. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's always great to follow Max because Max does stuff off my presentation for me. So thank you, Max. And uh, thank you for making um, us uh, Brits here so welcome after July the 24th. Um, so I'm here to talk about Kite Power Solutions. Um, we're basically uh, looking at um, very, some technology very similar to, to uh, Max's. We're looking at airborne wind energy systems. I mean, I love this picture, and I really, really do love offshore wind, and I think wind turbines are quite elegant, they're quite beautiful. But will, that, will, the, will their cost ever really compete with fossil fuel? And that's one of the challenges they really have over the next five or six years to actually get, down that, get that price down. But at Kite Power Systems, we believe we have, the, we have a viable alternative. We believe we have a technology that can actually beat the cost of fossil fuel. And why do we, why, how can we do this? Well, we use significantly less material. We, uh, we, can pr we produce much higher yield per megawatt installed. And that results in something about half the price of the best projected levelized cost of energy for 2020, if we discount what's happened at Bull Cell on Tuesday. That's an, that's an anomaly in the market, I think. And we can also deploy this, te this, deploy this technology in deep water, where um, conventional wind is going to be really struggling to actually meet any real significant cost reductions. So KPS, um, we've got a very experienced management team. Uh, a couple of our managers have actually been involved in several exits. Um, we actually sold um, one of our businesses to Siemens a couple of years ago. The team has got a wide variety of experience in all sorts of marine, various technology, tidal, um, and other forms of energy. So the team we believe, the management team we believe what we know what we're doing. We've got a very good team of engineers, and our engineering team is split 50% software and 50% hardware. Um, and there's a very strong competence in the team for neural networks, which is where we think we're going to be going for the overall array control in the future to optimize the energy yield. And we really believe that we can actually deliver a commercial product based on our experience and competency. We all know what we're talking about. We're all talking about combat, combating climate change. And this is where we're really heavily focused on. So I won't dwell on this too much. So horizontal axis wind turbines. Their challenges are, can they really sustain the required support that they need from governments to deploy them? And actually, requiring government support to deploy offshore wind is a holdback in evolving countries, especially in developing nations, etc. There's a lot of offshore opportunity out there, but currently that's limited to Europe, North America, and China, where the subsidies are available and where the specialist installation vessels are available. We don't need the specialist installation vessels. And our levelized cost of energy is such that we don't need um, government support, and we can deploy this in deep water. So can they achieve cost, the cost reduction targets? And that's the big challenge to, um, to conventional wind. And the deeper water they go, the more steel they use, the more expensive they're going to get. So we're now at a crossroads. Do we actually progress with significant cost reduction investment in horizontal axis wind turbines? Or do we look at alternative technologies like airborne wind energy, including kite power solutions? So kites, we believe kites are the answer. And when we talk about kites, we really mean kites. But these are no kites that you've ever seen before. We're using different materials to any, any kites. We're using hybrid wings, which basically are not flexible kites. They're rigid kites. So it's a really, really, really interesting technology. So for um, identical size of HAWT, identical uh, site conditions, basically we produce, we use 85% less material, we produce 20% more yield, and like we say, it reduces in half the levelized cost of energy. Max has very nicely explained how it works. We have, from our system, we have two kites on one base station. When one kite's flying out, it's generating energy, and then it basically it recovers, and the second kite then flies out. And on our base station, we've got an integra integrated energy storage capability, so we can actually give really clean, consistent power to the grid. We have a lot of competition, including Max and several other developers in the Netherlands, and Google Makani is out there. Google's actually put a lot of money into airborne wind energy systems. We have a really nice IP suite. We have uh, four really, really robust patent families, which actually protects some of our core IP, which gives us some, gives us some significant advantages. We have a 40 kilowatt system operational, and uh, if anybody wants to come and see it, they're welcome. We can actually show it to them. And what we've done in, in the last year is we actually have a dedicated test site. We can run these things 24-7, unrestricted, which basically sets us apart from the rest of the sector at the moment. Um, and we are, we are really focused on developing not just the products, but our early projects as well. We want to give ourselves some project and technology pull. So we are actually going to go out and actually invest in projects and work with our project developing partners. 
So, and we have a really robust technical uh, development strategy which actually gives us a product at the end of the day where we can actually go out to the insurers, we can go out to the investors, and we can say, here is a product which you can invest in. So, um, our business development strategy is, obviously, we're going to go onshore first. We don't want to go offshore, risk of going offshore, costs go up, everything escalates. I worked in the tidal sector for 10 years. I know how much it costs to maintain something in the ocean. You don't want to do it. Um, our, bis um, our market opportunities, so we have onshore, we have offshore, but there's a really interesting opportunity coming out there in the 2020s. There's repowering. There is three gigawatts of offshore wind there, all three, all three, gig all, all three megawatt turbines which is going to need repowering in the mid-20s. We can take the towers off, we can take the turbines off, we can use all of the existing electrical infrastructure and the foundation and just plonk our systems on top. We can get another 25 years out of those foundations. You can't simply put an, an HAWT back on the foundation because the foundation's lifed. Our loads are significantly reduced. So um, we're going to be generating first revenue in 2019, 2020. Yeah, we should be cash neutral the year after, and um, hopefully by 2024, if the business plan's going well, well, we'll have actually generated a £100 million cumulative profit. Yes, we are seeking investment. That's why we're here today. Um, we're, looking, we're looking to close around around £7 million late summer, early autumn. Um, the £7 million will be used to develop the 500 kilowatt system as a product, not just a demonstrator, but it will be a product we can sell. And it'll also be used to actually design the 3 megawatt system. We actually have significant strategic and financial interest where we are at the moment. These guys are actually involved in the due diligence process. We actually have term sheets. So we're keen to talk to anybody that wants to talk to us. So thank you. Um, I'm David Ainsworth. These are my contact details. Um, while I'm standing here, I'd just like to say thank you to Emma for Life Size, Life Size Media. They produced a brilliant film on KPS, which is available on Life Size Media website and also available on YouTube, and it's really worth a watch. Okay, thank you very much for your time.